let's 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 start with something like uh, if we want to add number five to number three, when we need some kind of register. Okay, let let's use the let's let first of all let's use register five by 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 no special preference. Okay, so if we want to add something, we we add it in the register. So the first to, to make the sure that the value is correct, we have to set the zero to this register. So what I did, which is well, not 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 too clever, but right. This is a kind of the uh, work whatever register that is subtract together and then stored by itself, it becomes zero. Okay, we need to make sure that it's you cannot assume that one. In the actual processor, that when you start the machine, it is zero. It is a random number. Okay. All right. But but if you use a high level language compiler, they generate the sequence to clear all the register before the program start. Okay. You want to add number, right? So you add immediate. Or you, you want to add another, and we want to add it to register five, right? The the source, the first source is register five. The second is number that we want to add. So we add five into register five and store there. And then we add another again three. Okay. And the result in register five. So we start extremely simple by these three instructions. And then we copy them. And I put it here. Boom. So this is the simulator of the CPU in 32 bit and run really slowly, right? You, you can choose how fast it runs. Okay? But we run just one instruction at a time. So it's very slow, it, depending on how we click it. Okay, and um, if you want to know which instruction is support in this web-based interpreter or simulator, you can just click here to read it very, very long uh, document. Okay, but if you're curious, you can have a look here. When we put in the program, there's no special syntax. I just write similar to textbook and all the number here, five and three is, is uh, base 10. So you don't have to, to do hexadecimal or other things. So reset. Okay, now the, the interpreter start at the beginning and every, actually when, when it started every reaches zero, but we cannot depend on that, okay. So I step, boom. So line one, we clear reaches a five and see reaches a five is okay, it's clear, right? And then we execute another, add immediate five, reaches a five become five, okay. And then we step another instruction at three, and reader five become eight. So voila, our first program is finished correctly. Okay, now we are more ambitious. We want to do some kind of loop, okay? Within using only register, no, no memory yet, okay? So let, let's say the, the pseudo code or the, the kind of program we want to do is maybe we add, want to add number one to 10, okay? Number one to 10. And everything happened in, inside register. So do, we don't have to worry about how to get the, the value from the memory or the, how to store the memory yet. Oh, for pseudocode, I use maybe uh, two variable. One is to vary one, so five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, right? The other one is to, to keep the sum. I want to sum everything. So we start with the uh, index zero and sum is zero. And oh, this has to be. Well, why not? Hmm. Okay, so we run one to 10. And in one loop, we keep uh, sum it to variable s and then increase the index, okay? So the pseudocode is very clear how we translate it into a uh, machine code or assembly language similar that we can use interchangeable. We need, because we are doing everything in, in registers, so we need to, uh, to, to give the, the 
uh, all the variable which register. So I decided I will not touch x0 to x4. So I start with x5. No, no special reason. Okay. So I give uh, i to x5, s to x6, and the, we have one constant, right? Number 10. And because we, we want to branch, branch is if equal, uh, it's compared to register. So you have to have the value, constant value in the register. So I use uh, number seven, okay? All right, so now we, we map out everything and we can start our programming. The first three instruction is to make sure that the, our register is starting from zero, okay? So i equals zero, s equals zero, x7 equals zero, okay? And then I set uh, number 10 to x7. Okay, so I add 10 to zero and keep it there. So this is all initialized, whatever. And the loop start here. Okay. We compare i with constant 10, okay? So x5 with x7. And if it's equal, then we, one I wish number 10 it jump out, okay? Jump out uh, this number. Don't worry about it yet, just keep it. We, 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 we will jump out here, okay? Here, okay? We jump out here, all right? I will show you how to calculate it later. Well, in within the loop, there's two instruction I want to, to keep the sum. So I add uh, x6 with x5. Okay, so s plus i and store at the s, right? And the next is to increment the index. So x5 increment by one. All right. Uh, all this program will be the same except the, except this this is to two number, okay, which is the offset. Whether your process is for, for 64 bit or 32 bit. Uh, this interpreter that we are using is 32 bit. All right. And the, at the end, we when it go ahead, when it reach the end of the body of the loop, it's go back to compare again, compare again, compare again. So we have to do a kind of unconditional jump. Okay. Unconditional jump is easy. You you just use one register and compare it to itself. Whatever number it is, it, it always equal, right? So if uh, x5 is always equal x5, so it always jump. So we, we have to jump back to, to this number. So it become a minus, okay. Right now I will show you how to calculate the offset. Uh, each, uh, this one, we want to jump here, xxx, x, x, okay. We want to jump xxx. X, x. Therefore, is one instruction, two instruction, three instruction that we have to jump over. Three instruction is each instruction is four byte, right? Three instruction is one, two, three. We have to jump over three, and the address is start here, so it has to include itself, okay? Because it it uh, when the program calculate where to jump, it start from itself. So therefore, totally, it's four instruction each instruction. And when you jump back, it just this instruction and back one, back two, back three to this instruction. So it's three instruction. It is jump for four instruction forward. And then this jump three instruction backward. Okay. Uh, let's try this version first to see does it work and then copy. And then I put it here. Pass. All right, so let's shall begin, he said, boom. Okay, step one, step two, step three. So all the instruct, all the reaches have been used are clear now. X5 to X7, okay, all clear. And then we set X7 to 10. The result is shown on the screen. Next is uh, to check and then jump. Let's see, the first it, it will not jump, okay, so. Will not jump. 
Okay. Do not jump, then if it does not jump, it have to execute line six. Okay, okay. Now it add into X6, the first number, which is uh, zero. Okay. So you don't see anything. And then increment X5 by one, X5 become one, right? You can see it's here. And then now we jump back unconditionally. So next instruction has, to, if it's correct, it has to be line number five. Let's see. Okay. So it's actually 32 bit machine. So my offset of minus three instruction is okay. Three instruction, each instruction four bytes or 12 byte backward. All right. Right. We, we go to the group two or three times, right? And then now we add uh, the sum. Sum is in X6, now become three. Okay. Okay. So if it becomes tedious, you, you can go round and round and you can run it until there's no instruction, which is line number nine. So we can just go run. Okay. And no more instruction. All right. So our program is complete. And we can see the result that the, what is the sum to X5? Uh, we keep the sum in X6 is 45, right? So plus one to nine, not 10, because when it reached 10, it jump out. <laughs> ah, all right. So without any other way to, to set the memory by hand, we have to write a small program to set the memory. Okay, so I show you how. So what it does, is uh, well, this is the the format of the instruction that we use to set the, the, the memory. Okay, uh, this is come from uh, I think PowerPoint here. Okay, I hope you can see my screen properly. And the, the data transfer we stored up, uh, we stored word. Okay. Word in this case is I think it's mean four byte. Okay, so word right x five zero x six mean uh, x five two memory of a zero plus x six address. Okay, so oh, this mean. Um, there's some offset here, small number. We can we usually zero, four, eight, twelve because each word is four byte, right? So it's uh, stored in the memory like that. So uh, x six is another value. We usually use it at the, at the beginning of the array. So let's say we want to put it at the address two hundred. So we keep the the 200 constant number in register X6. Okay, so this is a, at the address X6, we store the value there. So we keep adding, right? Another one that will become two, and then we store at the next slot in the array. Each element of the array occupy four byte because we have a 32 bit machine, right? So the next one is offset by four, and then we continue to do the same thing. The next one offset by H, and then offset by 12. So if so, if let, let's, this is not con containing any loop, okay? So it's very simple to understand. Okay, so we have all of that here until line 12. And then if you want to set, say 10 elements, you just copy and pass, right? And you check the code that it work properly. Just run it to see. Okay, so it went to the completion at the line 12. Okay, so let's see where the, the pattern appear. Okay, it seemed to be appear here. So C8, this is a, a hexadecimal number. Okay, so C is 12. Ah, I'm already rusty, 12 by 16. Okay, all right, plus eight. Exactly 200. So CH in hexadecimal is actually the address 200. So you can continue 
to fill the array. If it's too tedious, then you, for the homework, I, I ask you to some 10 element and you shorten it to the five element. So the big, your, your code begin like this. And then you, let, let's say the last line of your code, maybe line 12, then you begin your, you begin your code here. Okay, now I think it should be clear how you can set the memory using this code. 